with Ignition. I'm sitting here with guitarist from Corn, Mr. Monkey. How are you? Mr. Schaefer. <laughs> Mr. Monkey Schaefer. Yes. James Monkey Schaefer to be exact. Yes. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Just trying to adapt to the heat. Right. Put those dreads up and just do the damn thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. Well, first off, congratulations on the Tint Studio album, Path of Totality. Thank you. Um, and the countless awards you guys have won, including Best Album. Um, in Revolvers, 100. I know, that's, that's amazing. It was pretty cool to get, you know, sort of recognized for trying to innovate and do something new. Absolutely, new oh, endeavors. Yeah. Perfect. Well, um, you collaborated with a plethora of producers for this album. Yes. What was that whole experience like? It was different. Each producer, you know, we worked one-on-one -on -one with some producers, and then some of the guys we, you know, sent tracks you know, over the internet and, right. you know, like the guy Feed Me, who's out of the UK. I'm a huge electronic music fan. Really? Well, okay, so, so you know very all Very familiar. Um, Noisia, mm -hmm. they're great. Um, I, I really want to work with them more. Um, they sent tracks. I just recently met those guys about two months ago in Amsterdam, because okay. they're from the Netherlands. Right. And, uh, Skrillex we worked one-on-one -on -one with, and um, Downlink we worked one-on-one -on -one with, he also helped mix the record. Um, so it was just kind of mixed up, and the guys who couldn't be there physically, you know, we, we would send tra we would send the, the tracks back that we worked on, and then they would kind of like work around them and correct them, and take out what they didn't like, and send us back other stuff that they did like. And, and make notes and talk to them on the phone. But it was kind of different experience for us, especially from the, the last record we made, which was the five of us, you know, in a little tiny room, right. you know, jamming and it was much different. No. Which is good because, you know, it's to keep things fresh and keep things, you know, it, just, it keeps you on top of your game and then it's just, you know, it's all challenging yourself and, and challenging what you do it always promotes an inner growth of creativity that sort of just continues and I think if you're not growing musically or with whatever you do uh, what's the point yes. <laughs> Well, it interests. Th there was, you know, basically, you know, we started with Skrillex. We mm -hmm. did this song, Get Up, and that sort of, that was, we were going to do that with, um, you know, just be an EP. We were going to do three or four songs. Oh, okay. But that whole experience was really, went really well, and everybody liked the tracks. And, you know, and then Jonathan called me and said, what do you think about doing a, a whole album? I said, just do it. That was, you know, let's... Let's take a chance. Let's go out on a limb, and it sort of reminds me of, you know, the first couple of albums that Corn made. We mm -hmm. were trying to do something new and innovate, and um, so why not? Now, with this new sound, the new endeavor you guys are embarking on, how do you feel your old school fans are going to react to it? Do you, are you afraid at all that you may alienate some of them? What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are, you know, uh, with what we do and what we've been doing for almost 20 years, I think as a corn fan, because I am a corn fan. <laughs> no, get out of here. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Um, this is, you know, something I'm passionate about, and obviously it's not just a paycheck, you know, because I'll get up there and play every night for free, but they just have to pay me, so it's cool. It's a sweet deal. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but I think that with every Corn album, it's sort of a, a new chapter, and an, it's, a, it's a way to reinvent yourself, so I always try to tell new bands this, try something different with each album, you know. Um, and that's, I think, 
being a, a, if they're a hardcore corn fan, they know that each album is going to be slightly different. But still have some similar elements. Yeah, I mean, bass heavy, bass driven. Exa- exactly. Jonathan's vocals, my guitar right. sound. There's always that common thread through every corn album. So um, I think as someone on the creative end of things, it's fun to have that chance to, and a clean slate to sort of uh, start fresh. And then as a, if, you know, if I didn't know it was going to come out, then I would think, I can't wait to see what they're going to do next. Right. Yeah, but they're not all going to sound like, you know, every song's not going to sound like blind for a time. <laughs> Sorry. So, I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong here, this was the first Korn album that was completely done in standard tuning? Yes. What was that like? It was actually refreshing because, well, as far as the guitars, they respond much better. With the 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 lower tunings, you can have a lot of technical problems. um, But it was nice. I think Jonathan feels more comfortable in a standard tuning to sing to, uh, and I think just the, the different keys, um, changing the keys around uh, w- was helpful to just sort of find new voicings for chords. You know. this kind of the future of metal sound. Um, what are your thoughts on that statement? Um, do you think this is where the new metal is heading? Um, I think that the elements that we've sort of exercised in this recording and the techniques that we have been shown by a lot of these dubstep producers, mm-hmm. we're going to use because a lot of them are tricks that um, people should use in recordings because they get the cleanest, heaviest bass sounds. And I think as far as techniques, mm-hmm. this stuff is the future. Okay. And I'm not saying music note selections, mm-hmm. you know, because that's to whoever the creator is. It's like telling an artist what colors to paint with, right. you know. But it's basically changing the brushes, you know, mm-hmm. like these are the new brushes and they'll make your <laughs> your painting look great, you know. So. Okay. You are a very, very busy man, have lots to do for the rest of the day, so um, I'll leave you with one last question. If your house were to catch fire, Lord, let's hope that that doesn't happen. And you were only able to snag one guitar. What on earth would it be? Well, there's a double neck um, Gibson that Jimmy Page signed for me. So I met him in London, and he came and watched the corn show. One of our old tour managers has, was friends with him and came and watched uh, us play after the show. And my tour manager said, "Don't whatever you do, don't ask him to sign <laughs> shit. Like, just tell, you know, just, just cool. don't. Just, just be cool. cool. <laughs> He'll probably take some pictures with you, but right. don't ask him to sign anything, because people like to go and sell whatever he signs on eBay. Right. And I, I, I I happen to have that guitar with me, and I, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a, it's an original, it's a Gibson, I don't think it's a vintage Gibson, it's, but um, he, he signed the back of it, <laughs> the back of the headstock. You did it anyway, and you got that signature. And I got it, and you know, I promised him that I would never sell the guitar. Do you have a written contract or anything before you took off? No. Okay. Just my word. Right. It's as good as a great contract. Well, thank you very, very much All for right. taking the time out to talk to us. Thank you. 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 Thank